Good morning and welcome to this fireside chat with Mr. Doug McMillan, President and CEO of Walmart. I am Morali Matrala, a marketing professor, and I'm really excited and honored to have this opportunity to moderate this fireside chat and address a few questions to uh, Mr. McMillan, who has kindly said I could call him Doug. So without further ado, I will go to my first question, which should be of interest uh, to our audience in uh, India, especially, which is, uh, how do you see the retail ecosystem in India evolving in the future? And what role will technology play in this evolution? Professor Morali, thank you very much for taking time to participate. It's really nice to meet you. I hope to meet you in person sometime. And hello to everybody. Um, the, the Indian market is um, very unique and exciting. It's one of the most exciting markets around the world, one of the, one of the top three along with the U.S. and China. And so we're really excited to be a part of that and proud of the history that we've had in the country as we work to build a business there. And we think the future is very bright. And we've, we're going to see a market that's north of a trillion U.S. dollars um, by 2025, I believe. And the way that it is evolving um, is common in some ways with what we see in other countries, but has its own uniqueness, which makes it exciting. I um, mean, we're really excited about the Flipkart and PhonePay leadership teams and, and our associates there and the businesses that are being built. Um, the Flipkart business is now has reached over 300,000 marketplace sellers, and the phone pay business has more than 300 million users, which is just an amazing number, and both are growing very well. And When I step back and look at the retail ecosystem, the commonalities that I see are that they're related to how people live their lives. Um, you know, families shop for products. Some of those they eat. Some of them they use in other ways. Those items are, are needs and wants. They're discretionary at times. That's, that's common. Products and services have a lot of commonality. The way we spend our time consuming media, spending time with family, et cetera, there's commonality there. And so the retail ecosystem over time has those big thematic things in common. But the uniqueness really matters. Um, and India is such a diverse market. It's it's not one country in, in some ways. And so we have to think local and execute locally. And it has its own rules. And so we've got to comply with those rules. Today, we're not allowed to make a foreign direct investment in a multi-brand retail store, the physical brick and mortar store. So we operate in a different way. In the end, we've got to solve food in that kind of business model and solve other categories so that we're able to grow and serve people in the way that they want to be served. I do think we have seen and will see generation skipping in India, um, which will be exciting. And some of that learning will bring back to other markets that we have. Um, it's been really fun the last few years to see how our team there has solved problems um, because you have to be so creative and so open and so fast. And so that inspires us around the world. That is uh, great. Uh, I was in India recently, and uh, I do believe it is poised for an omnichannel shopping revolution. But for companies to be prepared for this, I have my next question, which is for some companies to accomplish all that, they'll, they will need to undergo a bit of a digital transformation, which is something Walmart is no stranger to. Uh, can you describe the magnitude of undergoing a digital transformation in a company of Walmart size? Yeah. And the role of technology in all of our markets, um, including India, is even more important than ever. Um, your first question asked about how retail tech will apply to India. This digital transformation question is, is really the same. Companies that are born recently, that are more digitally native, have some advantages. It's also true that in an omni-channel world, some of the older companies that may employ more people, have more physical assets, would have some advantages, but only if those older businesses, in our case, an older, larger business, have an openness and an ability to change. Um, we are fortunate at Walmart. We inherit a strong set of DNA from our founder, Sam Walton, who loved change. And frequently around the world, I'll say to a group of associates, um, even on Zoom, um, but it's even more fun in person. The only things that are constant at Walmart other than our purpose and our values is, and our associates will respond, change. Because we know that in our business, change is crucial to being able to be part of the future. 
And so leading a digital transformation at scale is a, is a real challenge. We operate in multiple countries. We've got some commonality in our infrastructure and underpinning. That needs to be modernized. And Suresh Kumar and the team are doing a fantastic job of not only doing that with our triplet strategy for the cloud, for example, and many other things, putting our data to work in a more effective way. But they're also engaging with the business in an agile fashion. We call it four in a box in a box at Walmart with customer product, business, and technology all at the same table, that way of working is enabling faster movement, more innovation, designing with an outcome in mind. And we are on a journey to be able to work that way consistently across the business. And the thing that, that I've learned the most trying to, to help lead this change is that a digital transformation in the end is about people. Yes, there is technology involved. Yes, there's, there are important applications for data. There's an important aspect for automation, automation to play. But you actually have to change the mindset of the way people have worked and have them be willing to work in a different way in a small team environment to get a different outcome as opposed to the way they might have been working within a silo where they have more, at least mentally, they think they have more clarity of ownership. But they frequently, we as humans, and I've done this, sub-optimize within the silos rather than designing for the customer, which is what we're on this journey to do now. Yeah, the, the scale and speed of what you're doing is just remarkable and stunning. Uh, it almost seems like you're creating an entirely new company, while at the same time trying to preserve some of the uh, elements and values of the old. So how does Walmart balance forgetting and borrowing from the past? Yeah, great question. And very hard, very central to this change that we were just talking about. Um, I'm, I'm blessed to work with a lot of people who, who've been with Walmart for a long time and new people who bring terrific skill sets, a great mindset, some experience to the table. And blending those together is, is a lot of fun and a big part of our challenge. And as I mentioned earlier, the way that we think about it is purpose and values are constant. Everything else is open to change. So be, be open to trying to, to learn these new ways of working and, and make more progress. And so we've been very repetitive about what's constant purpose, values, and the fact that everything else can change around us all the time and we have to be nimble and adaptable. And um, I'm, I'm grateful to work with a bunch of people that, that like that and are inspired by it. Great. Uh, and, and I'm sure that uh, the customer is always centric to your strategies. Uh, but what learnings throughout your digital transformation have you found to be most important? Yeah, it's um, people learn in different ways. Uh, I think the, the thing that comes to mind is there are some of us who learn by reading a case study or reading a technical manual, or there are other people who learn from touching and feeling and from experiences. And uh, repetition is so necessary. You know, what, what's the case for change? Why, why do you think we need to go through a digital transformation? What's a digital transformation look like? How do you think about product management? What is, how does the role of design thinking influence your approach to product management? How do you get the technologists at the table? And so we've done a lot of different things. We've given people things to read. We've, we've celebrated successes. One of the favorite things that, that I like to do is to bring in guests and interview them in front of our leadership group or different teams. And we've had um, different CEOs of different companies from Google to Salesforce to Microsoft and others come and do fireside chats with me where I get to ask, um, tell me about product management. And, and, and Satya Nadella, if you, if you were a leader at Walmart today, how would you be thinking about our opportunity to digitally transform? What would that look like? And that, those conversations have been enlightening and also a lot of fun. Great. Uh, certainly, uh, as professors, uh, I think we have a lot to teach our students uh, to keep up with all this. Uh, now, going behind the scenes a little bit, historically, Walmart has been as good as anyone on the planet in terms of managing the supply chain. Uh, what are the key dimensions of transforming a world-class supply chain, uh, one that's already world-class in a digital world? I think two dimensions come to mind. The first one is 
related to the optimization of data um, and the role of mathematics and, and algorithms to help us with how the whole system works from forecasting all the way through to the customer experience. And then the other one's related to robotics and automation. And we have both dimensions happening here at Walmart. I, this is my 31st year with the company and I, I remember what it was like to get into the food business in the United States and add food distribution center capacity. And today we sit here in, all, in our markets, in, including here in the US, with all these forms of, of distribution and fulfillment and movement. Um, we've got specialty centers for shoes and apparel. We've got perishable centers. We've got ambient general merchandise centers. And our stores are playing a role in last mile fulfillment as we pick more orders at store level to supplement what we're doing through e-commerce fulfillment centers. So things have changed a lot. And we sit here in 2021 with this opportunity to connect all those things up to optimize the entire supply chain, thinking through things like sustainability, environmental sustainability, and the raw materials that go into products to try and get toxins out or anything else out, remove plastics, all of that important work on the front end. And we get to try and connect that system up, um, forecasting what families are gonna need by location and making sure that that, that in stock, that flow is as strong as it can be, which has been really challenging during the pandemic and that mathematically we're doing it at the best possible cost, given the expectations that customers have. They get to decide how they shop, whether they wanna pick it up in a store, pick it up in a parking lot or have it delivered. We have to optimize that supply chain to meet what they want. And then the second aspect includes some exciting breakthroughs with automated storage and retrieval systems, some exciting things to come with last mile, including EV, AV and drones to try and connect that whole system up in a new way. And I'm, I'm convinced that if you go to say 2026, certainly 2030, hopefully closer to 2026, 2025, the amount of change that happens in our supply chain between today and that moment will be greater than the amount of change in any time in our history from a supply chain point of view. Um, the, the ingredients are on the table. Now we've just got to go bake the cake. That's wonderful, uh, no doubt. And uh, returning to India, uh, what are the possible learnings from all this for Walmart in fast growing e ecosystems such as India? Yeah, when we were thinking about making our investment in Flipkart and PhonePay, my key takeaway from my visits to those businesses and in our conversations as we were um, negotiating and making that investment my key takeaway was this team can problem, can problem solve. They can overcome things. And no doubt every market where we operate, especially India is going to have challenges. It's a very dynamic environment. Rules are changing, the customer's changing, competition's changing. So where you sit at this moment is only a partial picture of the story of that business. The real question is, can you show up every day and have a really capable, engaged set of associates, leaders that want to solve tomorrow's problems. Um, when, I, when I talk to people that are new to our company, whether they work in India or elsewhere, what I've been trying to explain to people lately is I've now in my, in my old age and term in, in service here come to really understand that all we've been trying to do for 30 years here is solve problems. Some are big and some are small. Our business is imperfect. Customer needs and wants are changing. It's a fluid environment. So there are always opportunities to get better. And if you wake up every day and you, you're clear on which problems should be solved first and why, and you think big and be courageous at times and try to solve those, and you solve them and move on to the next ones, that's what success looks like. The, the, it, you never finish. Like it's, it's an all you can eat buffet and it keeps getting refilled. There will be new things to solve. But if your mindset is one of being excited about that, then wow, this is the right business to be in because that's the reality here. What you say is really stimulating. And uh, now I'm coming to my last question uh, of this uh, chat, uh, but it's fairly open-ended. How would you describe Walmart in 10 years? What do you think the firm would look like? 
Yeah, when, if you close your eyes and imagine what we'd like this place to look like in 10 years, what comes to my mind is a conversation with a parent that will tell you how Walmart is making a difference in the lives of their family members. And that would include things related to retail. We have the products and services they need. They're of the quality that they need, priced better than anybody else at a value, which enables them to do more with their, their life. And we played a bigger role in healthcare. We played a bigger role with their family's ability to create wealth because of our financial services products. And we've done it in a way that's built trust. And so the words that I imagine come from this parent describing how they trust Walmart and they tell you how we've practically made a difference in their life across those dimensions, retail, healthcare, financial services, and some markets, other services, so that we know that we fulfilled our purpose. Our, our founder articulated it. We have an opportunity if we continue to work together to save people money and show, what it's, show them what it's like to save and have a better life, have a better lifestyle. And that's, that's the purpose that gets us up every day. This has been so nice and wonderful talking to you. I have no more questions, but if you have any closing comments, that'll be great. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Marley. Appreciate your time too. Just say thanks to our team.